Fisher & Paykel Healthcare is on a continuous mission to improve care and outcomes through inspired, world-leading healthcare solutions. Within our organisation, we have dedicated team members working together to achieve a common goal, the next generation of care for the most vulnerable patient population, our children. The evidence shows that there is a place to use both pressure-based and flow-based non-invasive therapies within the NICU. With both therapy types being used, it is important to understand when you would choose one or the other. With non-invasive therapy increasingly becoming the primary choice for respiratory support in neonates, we are here to discuss the key characteristics of pressure and flow-based therapy interfaces and how the interface design optimizes the therapy that is intended to be given. You would choose a therapy based on the level of support that the baby actually needs. A pressure-based therapy helps maintain a functional residual capacity. It also keeps the airways open and improves gas exchange, which ultimately reduces the work of breathing. So if you're wanting to deliver a pressure to help keep the airways open, then it's important to have an interface that has a reliable seal. That way, the pressure that you set at the ventilator or at the bubbler will essentially be what the baby is receiving. The delivered pressure helps reduce the effort required by the baby to breathe. To maintain these therapeutic benefits, it's important for the interface to have relatively wide tubes so that it's easy for the baby to breathe out through the interface. So if you're using a nasal cannula in a sealed situation, sealing into the patient's nares, then that will be forcing the patient's expiration to go back down through the tubes. That can result in a high work of breathing, undoing one of the key therapeutic benefits of pressure delivery. So you would choose a flow-based therapy such as high flow when a baby is more stable and doesn't require continuous pressure support. The therapy helps with washout of anatomical dead space, which can help with the work of breathing. The interface design also helps to reduce nasal trauma. Flow-based therapies do not need to maintain a set pressure, and that's why a flow-based interface does not need to create or maintain a seal inside the nares. This is what we call an open system, which typically uses an unsealed interface. To help reduce the baby's work of breathing, an unsealed interface allows the baby to breathe out around the prongs instead of against the incoming flow. This helps the baby be more comfortable as an unsealed interface has reduced contact inside the nares. As we are delivering a set flow rate instead of a set pressure, the resistance to flow of the interface can be increased without affecting the efficacy of the therapy. This is why we have designed a flow-based interface with narrower tubing when compared to a pressure-based interface. The narrower tubing makes it easier for nurses to care for the babies and allows parents and babies to get more cuddles in and experience skin-to-skin -skin contact. As Fisher & Paiku Healthcare, our interfaces are meticulously designed and engineered to deliver intended therapies to the vulnerable neonatal population. Our dedicated team are continuously innovating to help clinicians improve their care and outcomes for their patients. To learn more about the neonatal care continuum and products we offer, head to fbhcare.com.